welcome to the August collaboration of Makers with Heart. In this month, we are all showcasing SVGs or digital art from close to my heart in our projects. This time, I decided to take an old digital art group collection, that's the word I'm looking for, sorry, and pair it with this new crisp air paper. And I am once again diving back into my mom's photos from the 1940s, 50s, and 60s. And the colors in this just spoke to me for a first day of school photo, which is what this is. First day of kindergarten in 1949 for my mom. The first thing that I want to show you is once you purchase a collection of uh, digital art, it's going to be in your account under digital library so you go to that library and then you can with that blue button there on the right download those images onto your computer place them into a folder and then you're going to extract all of those images select where you want those to go and extract within that extra extracted file folder is not only the SVG files but also an image file kind of for a quick reference of what comes in those sets so now you go into Cricut, and I've already done it once, but I want to show you the steps of you go to upload an image, and you're going to select from that folder that you just extracted all those images into, and pick the image you want. In this case, I'm doing the um, Bloom and Grow layout. I'm not going to use the whole thing, but I'm so I selected that. You can save it with different tags so that you know that you can find it again in the future, and then add it to your canvas. And like I said, I'm going to do a single page layout and I have an idea of the direction I want to go. And I'm going to show you some of the tools that I use to kind of create my layout in Cricut Design Space. So right now I'm selecting certain elements that I know that I don't want to use. The background that's in gray there is just kind of a placeholder. And sometimes I need to keep it there just so that I know um, how big of space I have. This particular day I'm I'm pretty confident on the direction I'm going in. So here I'm selecting each individual item, and then I wanted you to see that if you drag your mouse, like you click on your mouse and drag it over the images you wanna select, it'll group them and then you can do the same action to each of those just with one click. So now I'm gonna um, size my film strip and the scalloped edge that's under that all at the same time by selecting those together. When I cut them, I didn't do that originally, and so you'll see later on that I have to trim that to the right size. But here, um, I lost my footage, so I'm redoing this for you again. So I think I'm gonna be, make this a little more uh, thorough for you. I'm gonna move my butterfly over. I tilted my film strip with the scalloped edge, and I'm not doing an exact placement. I'm just kind of getting an idea if this is really the direction I wanna go in. So I selected that whole vignette with the tag and the flowers, and I'm placing them over onto that film strip. And when I actually do the layout, I'm sure that some of the flowers are gonna be on top. So now here's a tip that I have to get those little pieces off. This is a brand new mat. Um, as you can see, I did this layout on August 10th. And so I just took a scraper, it happens to be from Pampered Chef, but a credit card will work as well, and scrape off my mat. I went ahead and assembled all of the components. And again, I didn't use the Info Bloom colors, but rather the crisp air colors for this set. And so I assembled all of them with the layers and everything, and I put them on that uh, dollar store cutting board. Just it makes it easier to kind of keep them together and typically out of harm's way. And I'll just dry fit some of these just to get an idea. I'm using the full sheet of paper from the crisp air. I kind of liked the leaves on that. Um, it turned out that it was just a little too busy for my taste. So I do end up changing that a little bit, but you'll see more of my process of dry fitting and playing with the words and the images and just kind of getting a feel for what direction I think these are going to go in. I really like the details of the and grow and grow how small of a font that is, but it still holds its own, if that makes any sense. This leaf that I have in my hand now, the blue and orange one, are actually leftover pieces from the other cuts that I combined to just give me some more variety in this layout. So I think at this point I'm starting to realize that the background with all of the embellishments are a little too busy for me, 
and so I'm going to swap that out or actually cut a frame and if you haven't cut a frame on a piece of paper it's for me what I do is I line up the one edge with the width of the frame that I want and then I cut making sure that I don't cut too far off of the end of the paper you're just cutting the center out and I'll show you that here so I'm lining this up with one and a quarter on my ruler and then I'm just cutting the inside of the paper and with your scissors you can then connect those lines pretty easily. I decided that I wanted to add some sapphire ink to all the edges of my pieces and I won't have you watch me do all that but basically I just wanted to show on the scallop that if you rock your blender brush you can get both sides of that pretty easily and now you can see on this tag that blue edge just really kind of makes it stand out against that background. And this again, the uh, um, plaid paper here that's the orange tone on toner, it's actually the paprika tone on tone, um, is also from the Crisp Air papers. I'm going to place all these, like I said, I'm very much a visual person and I like to make sure that it's going to go in a direction that I like or that I have an opportunity to change it before I glue it down permanently. And so I don't know if you do that or not. I know my ladies used to go ahead and just start gluing right away and it was always like, stop, dry fit first. <laughs> it saves so much pain later if you dry fit up front. And then the butterfly on here, I between the flower and the butterfly and then that little I don't know if it's a journaling piece or it kind of looks like a ticket end of the Sundance colors. You have plenty of green in there. Your sapphire is also spread throughout the page. So it's kind of nice to make sure that you have some balance in your colors on your layouts. And as you can see, I decided to change my uh, title here to go just along the bottom and it's gonna fit just perfectly. It, it almost doesn't fit and I thought maybe it wouldn't, but I'm gonna squeeze that in here and very pleased with how that's gonna turn out. So I've glued everything down. I didn't make you watch that or glued most things down. And here I put some foam tape on the wings of the butterfly just so that it sticks up a little bit. In my layout um, with the foam underneath there, it'll give it a little bit of depth. And I have glue on the back of that orange leaf, but I haven't glued it down yet because I remembered that the September, or excuse me, the August stamp of the month had kind of a school theme. And I thought, oh, how cool will that be to stamp in the film strip here in the background? So I grabbed the stack of books and I'm going to just practice because it's a brand new stamp. I haven't used it yet. So I'm going to stamp that. And really you should put foam or stamp on the back of a Versamat. Uh, thankfully, I realized that I hadn't done that, so I took my time and, and I have enough experience. And the close to my heart stamps are, are high enough quality that I kind of got away with it. So now I'm going to tuck my photo back under there. And I'd only kind of tacked some of these things down just because um, I knew that I was going to need to move them to do my film strip stamping. And I am speeding up the video here, and I do have chapters in this if you didn't want to watch the, the coloring, but I'm using my shimmer brushes to color. For me, it is quick and easy. It adds a lot of interest and fun to your layout. It's, it's a subtle shimmer. Um, I thought about also adding some shimmers to the flowers and the butterflies, but when I really looked at it, I thought the books in the center kind of framed the photo and brought your eye there, and if I would have done it on the heart or on the butterfly, I just felt like that was going to distract from the one photo here. And as it's a older sepia tone, we'll call it print, I really didn't want to have too much competing with it, which I already did. But that's also why I triple matted the photo. I don't know if you noticed that, but I triple matted it because again, it's just one of those things that it elevates it, it gives it some more presence. So you're naturally drawn to that. And these are the enamel embellishments that come with the Crisp Air collection, or you can purchase, they're part of the Crisp Air collection, you can purchase them as an add-on to your paper and stickers. And I didn't find any stickers that I wanted to use just because it's more of the fall um, theme and this is more of a first day of school 
theme layout. But you can see from the back of the photo that I showed in the beginning, I captured the date. I also captured the first day of school. And this will be another page for an uh, album for my mom. And I did an album back in March, if you didn't see it, all kind of with a color theme in mind. And I used the same embellishments. Now I'm kind of taking, cherry picking some photos, let's say, and, and doing them more thematic pages with colors and all. Here's how you can connect with me. Yesterday was Jessica's, uh, her take on SVGs, or no, yesterday was Kim's, excuse me, and tomorrow is Katie's. So be sure to check out the playlist that I will have in the description and give them some love. This has been fun to do. It's always nice to hear your comments. Bless.